now being the time and the hour for our regular board meeting. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be led by John Cusco. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I understand we, oh, roll call first, sorry. Director Evans? Here. Director Campbell? Here. Director Poe? Here. Director Pinello? Here. Director Martin? Here. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna add something to the agenda real quick. Uh, the general manager has a couple of guests here that he'd like to uh, uh, at least, uh, so we see who these people are. Thank you very much, Dan. Rick Martin. Uh, you may recall that the board, uh, the district and the board has been supporting uh, working with Kevin over at Encina, uh, Tom here, um, and others that pulling together a, a program at uh, UC, um, San Marcos. Yeah, State University. Yeah, San Marcos. Um, and it's to bring people into the industry and teach them all the various aspects about the water industry at CSU. Um, it's to bring them in to show that it's not just water, it's the whole process. You have to learn everything associated with the public agency. We had our kickoff meeting last night, um, 6.30 to 9.30, uh, Tuesdays for the next eight weeks. Included will be two tours. One will be part of Valacitos, uh, the Water Authority facility, and then the last one will be uh, Kevin over in Encina uh, to take care of that. Uh, but we do have three of the students. Um, Bud? Five. We have five? Oh, well, we have a couple in turnable. We have Bud, we have Dan. And Katie, uh, they're th and also Rob Scholl and Ed Pedrazzi are also in the class. So what they're here tonight for is th their first assignment for the first week is to attend a meeting of a public agency that they don't work for if they're from the water industry. And then by next week, that's their assignment is turn in how the meeting goes, what the agenda is, and the topics of discussion. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, welcome you. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Mr. President. Yes, sir. And at today's... Um Capital Committee meeting at Encina, the number that was thrown out is Encina over the next five years is going to lose 44% of their staff to retirement. And I was shocked. And I know ours is, I don't know if it's that large, but it's a bigger number as well. It's, it's pretty significant. If you go back three years, we lost a little over 20% over the last couple of years already. Really? Yeah. So we'll probably lose another 25 to 30% within five years. Yeah. So I think this is great program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, going back to the agenda. Uh, we're going to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll try to get a better We don't need to roll call. Mr. I don't, I don't think so. Okay, right. thank you very much. He didn't pop his head up and say anything. <laughs> but he's busy on his phone, so he's not paying attention to it. Uh, now we have a presentation of our trans of a transparency certificate by Joe McKenzie, uh, our BID representative, but she's also here tonight as SDLA. Yeah. Past president. Oh. <laughs> past president. Well, you, which titles do you want? Uh, I'm immediate past want. president of the California <laughs> Special District Association, right. but I'm also treasurer for the uh, Special Districts Leadership Foundation, who, which is the 501c3 who um, conducts and uh, creates the programs for uh, special districts. Uh, so what, this, what you have earned is the District Transparency Certificate of Excellence. And really what it is, it's, uh, it's the result, what I have found, is the result of the culture, norms, and leadership of a district um, and the support of their staff on the, and the norm, the culture. It becomes a culture to educate yourself on local government, not only the issues, but local go governance. Because I don't know whether you found out there is, is a difference between the special district uh, Dias and the city council dais, but there, but there, but there is, and your board and your staff have taken that step, you know, one step further to become open and transparent to your constituents, 
And there's, as you know, there's a lot of uh, laws and rules that have been implemented over the, over the years to make local government more transparent, but rules only do so much. Uh, it's important that government leaders, such as yourself, think not only about the rules that will foster a more open and accountable government, but about the type of leadership and culture that will support the intent of those rules. And that's exactly what your district has accomplished with this. Um, this was basically designed so that uh, you can show your constituents, you hang it on the wall, hang it out there, right there where they pay their bill, so that they know what you have done. Your legislators have been notified of this um, award, and we also give you uh, a template, which I'm sure you can embellish uh, for your- uh, Press release. For your press release, right. thank you. Um, embellish? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> embellish? Well. Hey, you, you've, got a, you've got a full, <laughs> You've got a full PR department here. I'm, sh I'm sure they can take, <laughs> take it in. Uh, We're only part time. We rent them out. Uh, okay. Uh, but the Special Leadership Foundation, uh, as, as I said, is a 501c3 uh, non, -for non uh, profit. We were formed in 1999 and basically formed because the various special district associations, such as Aqua, CASA, uh, Mosquito Vector, uh, Parks and Rec, Hospital. They all saw a need for educating their directors. And each one didn't want to take on that role and have all five or seven of these of the uh, associations all doing a governance class. So it was formed and the first board had, was comprised of members from Aqua, CASA, Fire, the Fire Association, uh, hospital district and so forth. Uh, that has evolved now to about four years ago. Uh, the board is formed with three public members, uh, three members from uh, the CSDA, and three members from SDRMA, and that's Special District Risk Management Association, which is uh, a counterpart of what Aqua's JPIA is. It's an insurance arm but they are the arm that is basically funding these programs because we also have scholarships for um, staff and for directors, but it only goes up to operating budgets of $5 million. So Valacetus and BID are kind of out of that, out of the, that uh, mix. But again, that's why we're trying to you know, get the word out and to get uh, the information and the education out because as you know, so goes one district, step wrong, uh, we all get pulled right in, right into it. AB 1234 is a prime example, Sac Suburban, however many years ago. So again, uh, the other items that, uh, one of the other ones um, is the District of Distinction. You guys are already halfway there, you've already presented, you already have your three, three years of clean audits, you've already presented bits and pieces as necessary of your policies and procedures. So really, at this point, to get the dist District of Distinction, which about 57, 58 uh, districts now hold that distinction, um, like I said, you're almost there. And basically the only thing you really need to do is to have all of your board attend the governance class. It's a six hour class. Or as uh, Director Evans and uh, President Martin did, they attended the full academy because what CSDA found out was that it takes two, maybe three years to go through all four modules just simply because of everybody's work schedule. And the consensus in the survey was, hey, condense this all, give it to us in two and a half days, and we're, you know, and we're done because it does take, I think it took me five or six years to finally get that last, you know, that last class in because after a year you forget, oh yeah, I need to take that class and then your schedule doesn't work for that year. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've done. So I would hope that, uh, you know, we see your name on, on the list of districts of distinction because right now in uh, San Diego County, we have this irrigation district, Lucadia Wastewater, North County Cemetery, and a Lemon Municipal Water District. North County Cemetery? Yes. They were number one. Wow. They were number one. Oh. No jokes. So, <coughs> so it's my honor <laughs> to present this to 
the board. Uh, Hal, if you'd like to come down. Yeah. yeah. And I just happened to find some brochures on the District of Distinction. I'll take them. Can you pass them out? <laughs> hey, what are you going to do with them? pass them out. We'll, don't worry, we got it covered. Congratulations on the top of your board. <clears throat> Look at the camera. Yep, we're going to get it. Thank you very much, Joe. If I may, I just would really love to compliment the uh, Leadership Academy that we went to. It was absolutely focused. It was amazing. It was the best I can imagine having stoned that out over a period of time. So whoever put that into motion, it's wonderful and we came away not only with so much information but a real understanding of what more you needed to look into to continue to maintain it sometimes when you take a class and then you wait to take another class they don't connect so and that's I thank what we're just very much for supporting us to do that and i learned so much good so was excellent. and that's why we condensed it and the relationship between the special district leadership foundation and csda is that the uh, Leadership Foundation is a 501c3 uh, corporation in a not-for-profit not itself, but it is managed by CSDA, the staff. So that's kind of how we have that, uh, you know, that uh, working rela relationship. I, I, having attended that last year, I thought it was very worthwhile, very, uh, a lot of knowledge, and it was very interesting at the very next meeting that we came back to was uh, uh, going over our budget review by an outside company. It was like, wait, 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 I got all types of questions to ask. Yeah. Uh, we're so much to the chagrin, I think, of staff, because in more case we have more questions we're gonna ask. Yeah, auditors don't like you to ask questions. <laughs> no, we will this year. <laughs> yeah. turn, the, turn the oil up, we're gonna be working here midnights. But hey, congratulations. Thank you very Thank much, you, Joe. Joe. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks, Joe. And uh, if I may ask staff, if you would uh, let uh, the board members uh, who were not lucky enough to be able to have this at one shot, uh, know what it is they need. Right. So we yeah, can wrap it up. Yeah, they, Jim and Jim and, Jim and Jim and Mike. Mike knows he needs the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So. And that's what we'll do. Like I said, it, it worked out. So I did the same route as Joe. It took me four years to get through them all because you just can't get to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it they, takes a long time. And they're not held. I'm yeah. Just so we'll keep an eye on the workshops. Yeah. We can you know, okay. send Mike up. And I think Podal's got one, one of them left to do. Director Podal has one piece left. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay. The education catalog is on, is on the yeah, it's, it's online. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Good, <laughs> we'll, t we'll take care of that, though. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to do something else. All right. Uh, now is the time for oral communication. Any member of the public wishing to speak may certainly do so. If you fill out one of these forms for us, that would be nice. Um, however, we will not engage in a conversation on it. Uh, <laughs> Mike Hunsacker. <clears throat> Mike Hunsacker, 115, Equestrian Court. As you're aware, I deal with a number of citizen groups, and I'm on a committee to help a mobile home park, San Marcos View Estates. They have some severe problems with their utilities. Uh, the utilities were established somewhere in the early 70s or so, and according to our fairly loose county standards, the uti all the utilities, water, sewer, gas, electric, are all in the same trench. And it appears it was not done properly. Uh, there have been many gas leaks, and there have been questions at the state level of two mobile home parks in particular. One, I believe, is in San Bruno, which blew up from a gas leak. And the number two trouble spot identified by the California, uh, the, uh, let's see. There is a program being developed to help mobile home parks redo their utility lines. And there's even a state requirement coming soon that they do so. And there's some question of whether or not park 
residents can afford such. The number two problem re recognized in the state out of 5,000 mobile home parks is San Marcos View Estates Mobile Home Park. It has many leaks. It has had to be shut down from gas leaks a number of times. Its uh, residents can ill afford a five to $8,000 assessment per lot to pay for this. The proposed program is a pilot and is to uh, convert the utility lines at 10% of mobile home parks in the state. And San Marcos View Estates is to be pretty much the pilot for the pilot. It requires a great deal of coordination between the city and the utilities for easements and the question of how do you, how far you take these lines. Uh, there is also the question of, in current code, you have to bury water and sewer and separate from gas and electric. This means a very massive program. Now the program they're talking about covers only gas and electric, but you can't do those separate from the water and sewer. Since we're to be the pilot for the pilots, so to speak, uh, we're requesting a great deal of coordination with the uh, water district as well as the gas local SDG and E. There's still gonna be a question of cost because the residents can't really afford it and if you're gonna redo the gas and water lines as well, how is that to be managed? How is that to be coordinated? So out of 5,000 in the state, the primary eyes are on us to find a way to make this work and I request your uh, cooperation and support and possibly your suggestions on how to make this program work throughout the state. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunsaker, for your opinions, as always. Mr. President, are we allowed to ask questions at this point? Uh, no. no. Okay. I won't. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar will be voted upon by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or a member of the public requests that a particular item be removed from the consent calendar, in which case it will be considered separately under action items. With that, looking for a motion. I'll so move. I'll second, and I have a couple of questions and some of the other board members may. Uh, First of all, I noticed that we have a new warrant list summary chart. If we all go to that and see it, it's very, uh, I thought it was very interesting. Maybe someone would like to explain that to us. Absolutely, and that would be Mr. Fusco, please. Or excuse me, Wes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got to get my brain straight. And can we get it up there as well? So people Oh, actually, it? we didn't, I don't have a digital version can, on Yeah, it. we didn't put it on the uh, version of it. We know what we're talking about. I know we should get one, huh? I wasn't it's on page 12 of the agenda. Thank you. That's well, good afternoon. My name is Wes Owen. I'm the accounting supervisor. I'm actually excited I get to talk about something. I usually just a bystander. Um, I wish I had it up on the screen for you. So what? Everyone wants to see. <laughs> so I made a bunch of charts and graphs, and I can't even really take credit for the design of it. It was actually the uh, idea of Tom Scaglione. He asked me to create it. I'm sorry, who? Tom. <laughs> oh, number two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. Uh, just walk us through it a little bit, if you would. Sure. It's so, self-explanatory, but. Okay, so it shows, in summary, what the, uh, the warrants list today are, and that in comparison to our annual operating budget, not including capital. So it shows the March, for example, warrants list is 7% of the operating budget for the year. Uh, year to date, we spend 60% of our operating budget based on the warrants list. Um, then it shows the historical warrants by month, just to give you a trend, including the CWA water bills and the, is the red line. 
Uh, it shows the invoices processed for the, for the current warrants list and for the year to date. Uh, the total invoices processed year to date is 3,676. <coughs> and for the current warrants list, we processed 251 invoices. And then finally, it shows the top 10 vendors for the fiscal year to date. Okay, quick question. Um, um, Senior County Water Authority, the red line. Yes. I see it moves up in November, mm -hmm. fairly strong, drops down in December, yep. Santa Claus doesn't drink water, and <laughs> goes back up again in January. Is that a billing cycle? No, that is due to a couple of things. One, that we just created this and we hadn't um, sort of planned for this graph. So what we do is we put the water bills in, in for your approval planning for the future. So in November, we put in two because we planned that we wouldn't have as many meetings in December. And so we put in the two for, let's see, November we had the September and October water bills included. So was, there were two water bills included in there. That's why it's higher. It spikes in November. In December, there were no water bills included because we only had the one meeting and you'd already approved the previous water bills. I don't know if I went into did I confuse you on that? Yeah. How does, <laughs> why, why would this graph correlate with us having meetings? Because it actually is based on the warrants list amounts. For each board oh, meeting. So it's payable by board meeting. So if there oh, were $2 million okay. in that one warrants list, that's what's in th that month. So if, if you had two meetings and you had two at $2 million, the total in the graph is going to show $4 million for the month. So December is always going to be insignificant because there's only one meeting as compared to every other month there's two. Hopefully not, because in the future we'll know that we're preparing this graph. So in the December board meeting, we can include the CWA uh, water bill, possibly. If we get it in time. If we get, if it, we get yeah. it in time. Because we, we always try to get them in as soon as possible. So sometimes there, there might be two in one, just because we're trying to present it to the board as soon as we get it. Depends on the timing of when the Wednesdays fall for the board meetings. Right. If I may, though, in spite of that Mark little you. dip, um, if you were to average it out, we're still all sitting right, we're right around that four. Yep. Exactly, and that's just a matter of how it was accounted. Right, exactly. Okay. Any other questions on the chart? Just, Thank you. Thank you. Just, I know I've asked this before, but remind me, what's our fiscal year ends in June? Yes. Yes. Okay. June 30th. Perfect. Thanks. No other questions? Up. Yeah. General Manager? Yeah, you, you will notice a difference in the top 10 vendors. Because like right now, the bottom um, vendor, you've got, um, you've also got a um, CM on there, um, and you'll have large payments. So we may have a contract that suddenly comes due. Yeah. We may pay a capital payment out of several million dollars. So it could bump somebody in the top 10 vendors. But I think what you're going to see is the top five, we're always going to be there. The Water Authority is always going to be number one. Uh, and STG and E and Cena, everything else. So that list will shift around by month, but it's going to be based upon payables going out. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. And then these little circles at the top. So to be at sixty percent of budget right now mm -hmm. sounds good. Yes. Very good. So this will just this will continue to change as it goes along. Correct. Each time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's certainly pretty. <laughs> Seeing no other questions, thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question on uh, our warrant list about the ninth one down on page one is the Aqua Joint Powers 14 slash 15. I don't know what that means. And it's for $53,000 and it's property insurance renewal. Is that the 14th payment out of 15 or what is 14 15? Fiscal year. Fiscal year. Fiscal year 2014 15. So it's for the entire year. Yes, correct. Answer that question. Thank you very much. Next one down, uh, I won't mention the name because it doesn't really matter. Commercial driver's license renewal. Um, is that standard in the industry that when someone has a commercial license that we pay for the renewal of that? Or is that incumbent upon the person to have that for a job qualification? What the district has done uh, historically and will continue to do so is if the if there's a certification or a license or something required that they have, once they have it and they get the job here, the district then pays the renewal on their behalf. But it's required upon them to have that mm -hmm. certification or whatever it happens to be in order to have the job. Yes. But it's not included as part of that. Okay, I'm just curious at the differences because yeah. 
I don't know on the outside if you're a truck driver, you're not getting paid extra because you have a commercial license. You're supposed to have one. You're a truck driver. Right. You'll see the every month you might see a, a payment to CWA. That's the California Water Environment Association. That would be the wastewater ones. Um, you have AWWA. Oh, I'm not so, saying. Yeah. I'm not but saying it's, we but don't do it. That My is question is that is common practice. That's standard in this industry. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Director Evans. Um, on page 19, there was one, it's where we're doing our it's sewer revenue and expense report. And you know how you make little comments on significant variances? I wondered what the other revenue is at the top of the page. And it had dropped 82%. It's not a big amount of money. But I just wondered what other revenue was. I'd have to look at the detail to tell you. I know, it, like I prepared every month, and I know it's in there. I know a portion of it is interest revenue, but not all of it. It's so what part is interest revenue? Okay, interest revenue. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's one of the items that's in there. There are other items that I'd have to look at the detail to tell. That you. tells me a lot, though. If it's interest, that why it's small to begin with. <laughs> yes. Okay. It just didn't have a comment. I was curious about it. Maybe the AGM knows more about that. Well, it's. Probably late fees, you know, allocated to sewer to the interest late and lock fees too on uh, billing. Okay. So that, that's that's why. What's included? Okay, any other questions? The first and second roll call, please. Director Evans. Yes. Director Sanders. Yes. Director Portal. Yes. Director Yes. Director Martin. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Beg my indulgence for telling me how to do it. Uh, just noticing the spring 2014 splash, uh, I, I inquired off of Dennis, and I just want to put on the record that uh, we'd like to have incorporated in that splash, I do believe, a box we've talked about this, yeah. showing channels and times, not directing them to, to the city of San, Diego, uh, San Marcos, but having it ourselves. Shouldn't be hard for us to figure it out. Yeah, we, like I said, this was already to the point. I hadn't put the link for this one, but what we'll do is come up with a place to move it and move everything around and have that in there. Great. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, all right, moving right along to action items. 2.1, request for annexation development solution PAC. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Compel, address that please. Thank you, uh, President Martin, members of the board. Uh, this is a little under five acre parcel that's over by the 15 freeway and just north of the 78. It's going to be developing uh, and basically coming into or requested to, to join Valsius Water District sewer annexation. Um, as you can see from this parcel right here, it's a little bit under five acres, and uh, the staff recommends approval of annexation of the property uh, with the conditions listed in the staff report. I'd have, be happy to answer any questions if you have. Any questions from the board? No. Any motion? Moved. Proof. I'll second. And a second. Roll call vote, please. Director Evans? Yes. Director Hernandez? Yes. Director Poe? Yes. Director Canella? Yes. Yes. 2.2, request for annexation, Cortez property. Uh, thank you, President Markey, members of the board. Uh, this property actually is being affected by the grading of the property that the board just approved annexation of. Uh, so as part of the conditions, are basically negotiation with the property that's being developed, this property also is requesting annexation. Uh, with that, uh, this property is about 0.6 acres, and staff recommends approval of the annexation of the property with the conditions listed in the staff report. So I'm assuming from what I understand, this, this one here, this annexation, is the property owner that owned the entire parcel, sold off part of it for yep. development, and uh, now they're going to be hooked up to our system as well. Yes, and, and the, gr the grading of the property really actually affected the septic field is what, uh, on this property, so as a probably a negotiation consideration annexation and connecting to the sewer uh, system was part of the uh, conditions of the development between the two owners. Do we know what the, what the larger property development uh, project is? Yes, it's uh, the level 15 condominium and it will actually be a later board item coming for construction agreement. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, roll call vote, please. Roll call. Oh, the, the motion is oh, I'm sorry. Motion and second first. Second. Director Evans with the motion. Director Hernandez with the second. Roll call. Director Evans? Yes. Director Hernandez? Yes. Director Portal? Yes. Director Chanel? Yes. Director Martin? 
Yes. Yes. I just noticed a little thing on here. On the letter of request for annexation, they don't mark a reason on there. Is that important or not? They mark what they want, but not why. Uh, access and I to noticed in the other one it was marked. Oh, it says oh. access to public sewer. Yeah. That's all it needs to be? That's all it has to say, yeah. And as James indicated, because they um, interrupted the, the septic field, um, the health department's not very forgiving on allowing any septics when you're in an area that's an urban area now. No, yeah. actually, yeah. it's the one before I'm talking about. Oh, did they miss it on the one before? It's the one before that, yeah. before I compared it. 37. Didn't, I, maybe it's supposed to be proposed land development, but it just doesn't say. Yeah, they, they just missed they it. They just it's, missed it. It's supposed to be proposed land development on that one. Okay. When you say they, who are you missing? The developer should never sign Couldn't a contract with blanks. You know that. All right, moving on to 2.4 approval of construction agreement for level 15 condos. Uh, 2.3. Oh, sorry, 2.3 request for annexation. New point. Yes. Uh, thank you again, uh, President Martin, and members of the board. This is uh, another annexation. Uh, this one a little bit more complicated. Uh, basically, parcel 44 is requesting annexation into the sewer, uh, for sewer annexation to the district. Uh, in research, when they came in, we discovered that uh, parcel 46 and 44 did a boundary adjustment back in 2003, and a small corner, uh, and it's shown in the figure as portion of parcel 46, the 182.310.46, was actually uh, put into parcel, it used to be parcel 44, became part of parcel 46. Uh, this is usually caught at the county and provided to the district so this way proper annexation paperwork could be followed. However, there was no record when we researched it on our side and there's no record at the county that they could find that they ever sent it to us. So as part of this normal annexation of parcel 44, uh, we're also requesting to annex to clean up our boundaries a portion of parcel 46. So we're looking at about a five and a half acre parcel to be annexed within the main uh, annexation act here for uh, main board, a board action for parcel 44 and about 0.39 acres, which is that small triangle portion. So with that, uh, staff rec recommends uh, annexation of both those parcels with the recommendations and conditions listed in the staff report. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions for staff? Director Evans? So on um, parcel 46, it's in two pieces you're saying and the one little piece is still out of our district? If you, you want look, to add it to it. Yeah, if you look on the map, when they originally annexed, it was the, the full piece. That was a full okay. parcel. Okay. And then back in 2003, there was a boundary adjustment. And sometimes these things get missed. Uh, the county doesn't have a record of sending it to us, and we don't have a record of receiving it. So now you have a small little triangle that is part of parcel 46 that is not in uh, the sewer district. I move a recommendation. Motion. Second. And second. Roll call, please. Director Evans? Yes. Director Hernandez? Yes. Director Tuttle? Yes. Director Pinella? Yes. Director Martin? Yes. Now 2.4, approval of construction agreement for level 15 condos. Thank you again, uh, President Martin, members of the board. This is the uh, uh, development that was previously approved in board action for uh, annexation to the sewer district. Uh, it's already within the water. Uh, with this, the construction agreement is about a 20-foot extension of the sewer main for a sewer connection and about a 1,000-foot connection in the frontage of the, uh, for the water main. It's a 10-inch expansion to meet the fire flow requirements of the uh, condominium complex. Uh, with that, uh, staff recommends approval of the construction agreement uh, for level 15 condominium uh, uh, development project and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, okay. board any questions? General Manager. I just would like to note, you'll make, uh, you'll note there's a resolution 14, uh, get my glasses back on, 1441. So this will actually be the first development project coming in for payment of fees in accordance with the new board policy. So this would be the first one that's deferred prior to, yes. Prior to occup oh. occupancy or utility release, whatever the right term is that it turns out to be. And and do we know, are they going to uh, defer this till the end, or? They haven't paid them yet. Haven't, they, haven't, they haven't said anything. They haven't said anything. Oh. 
I, will, I would guess what will happen as we get closer, if they haven't gotten to the construction phase of actual occupancy, as we roll into the November period where we go through the annual adjustment to fees, I'm going to guess what they'll do is come in and pay accordingly. Yeah. Um, any, any feedback? James, did you have any one-on-one -on -one with this developer? Uh, yes, we met with him several times, <coughs> go over uh, the conditions, uh, the pipeline sizing, and also the, uh, the fees and timing of fees. Any any feedback you got from the fees and the timing of fees? Or no, I mean the, the, fle the, the flexibility. They they appreciated the flexibility, but they did not give us an indication of the timing <coughs> of how they were going to pay. Like again, as a general manager Lamb indicated, they're going to wait to see how the development goes. And my belief is the same that as they develop, uh, especially if uh, the construction goes, that prior to any escalation of fees, they'll probably come in and pay. Thank you. These are condominiums, so it's going to be subject to the market. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No. Need a motion. We have a motion. Need a second. Second. Roll call, please. Director Evans. Yes. Director Hernandez. Yes. Director Paul. Yes. Director Yes. Director Martin. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very Thank much, you, James. Two point five. District legal counsel rates. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it if you want me yeah. to. Uh, the, the, the boards had conversation um, uh, recently regarding um, council rates plus also a review process for council. What I did provide here, just as a base to the board, is some basic history uh, on council, how long it's been with the district. The last time there was a change in um, rate um, on behalf of the board for council, um, as well as a uh, basic comparison of the North County agencies that we do in, this, in North County we deal with. On um, the second page, um, just to go through from 2010 forward, which is what I was basically uh, requested to do, we looked at um, general services uh, the, there were four litigations three litigations going master plan plus some just um, other for general and then there's actually a table there provided for um, information as well the discussion of rates and payment of fees is not a um, protected item that can be moved under closed session it is an open session discussion uh, the, again, this is provided just at the direction board, so I'd be happy to answer any questions if there is any on that. I don't have anything else to offer. And then at the end of the agenda, there actually is a closed session item for two purposes. One is for the general manager staff, and the second closed session is to consider a review process of the board. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. I, I, I have one question. So uh, in closed session, what, what are you saying we can't talk about in closed session? Rates or determination of fees, what you pay. That's, that's an action in public session. If there is an evaluation of council, that's, cool. that's closed session. So if you actually had an evaluation process, something to judge against prior year and discuss, <clears throat> like you do with the general manager, that would be a closed session discussion. We don't have that information, nor do we have anything to compare it to. So the, this is provided for open session. It could be discussed in closed session with respect to where you want to go in the future, if there's a scope that you would like to request, so you know what services are provided and how they're provided. That is something that you could discuss in closed session. This is just provided as an information item. Okay, so in closed session after we can, we can talk about things in general, but not specifics. You, I'm trying you, to gather. You can just, what I, my understanding with the board's direction was I wasn't here before. Right. Um, and what I spoke with um, the chair about was to come up with a basic information of what are we, what's council currently paid, when was he last paid, how much are the expenditures, general categories. That's what I provided here as an informational item to you, for your, for your information. Uh, I think, as you notice, the recommendation was just, it's for your information. Uh, what you don't have, uh, which you have for, for myself as a general manager, you have a review process. That is allowed to be discussed in closed session because you do have the right to privacy when you discuss that. The board does not currently have a process for that with council. So that's why I added the item in closed session to discuss review. In closed session, you can discuss coming up with the contract if you so want, metrics. This is what service they provide. Here's how they provide it. Uh, if 
something happens, you come to the board. So that's the conversation you can have in closed session. And it's protected by that right. Okay, so the fees under the pie chart you're saying should be discussed now yeah. and not in closed session? Yes. Okay, but everything else as far as performance or the way you see things, that can be done in closed session. Absolutely. But yes. the numbers themselves or the questions on the numbers themselves have to be done in open session. Yes. Which this is? Yes. Okay. I, Director Evans, you Thank may you. certainly start. Thank you. It's not that I have a question, I really would like to compliment staff and council for our rates being significantly lower than the others. Um, this was a very useful piece of information to me because sometimes when you see the big numbers or what you're putting out, you have no way of comparing it to the other big numbers if you don't know what you're paying on an hourly basis. So I just am very impressed with that. And I also wanted to state on the litigations that we've been in, um, looks like the good news is the litigation fees are going down so hopefully we're coming to resolution but I didn't um, I, I didn't know what SSC litigation was so I don't know who answers that but no go ahead yeah I'll take that um, the district went through the treatment plan expansion of metal arc starting in 2005 2005 uh, it was about a two and a half three year construction process SSC uh, was the contractor who was awarded the project. Um, at the very beginning of the project, when you've been at the treatment plant, you, when you get in there, there was a lot of there was a lot of extra rock that was necessary to be removed. Um, towards the end of the uh, process, they did file a claim in litigation. Uh, we tried to resolve that through the you know normal meet and confer mediation process. I'll tell you that the it's all public record now. Uh, it was felt that they were owed about seven hundred fifty, maybe eight hundred thousand dollars, towards rock claim, which is what we offered. Their counter offer was thirteen million, uh, or eleven <coughs> between eleven and thirteen million. It fluctuated depending on which month they talked to us. Uh, that litigation went to the full extreme of the allowance by law on how long a litigation can go before you have to resolve it. We actually got special dispensation from the judge at the end to meet separately and resolve it through mediation. So that was a very long, drawn-out uh, litigation. It did settle for $1.1 million compared to what they wanted. Believe it or not, the litigant is still litigating that property with the pump manufacturer and the valve manufacturer. And James just got back, I think, from his second or third deposition, fourth depositions on that litigation. So it continues to this date. I just didn't know what the SSC was, but I do remember speaking of that before. Thank you for explaining that. And, um, <coughs> Mr. President. Yes, sir. I, do, I do recall that Mr. taking place. Um, was part of the negotiation the, the attorney fees? Because didn't, didn't we prevail? Or by virtue of the fact that we had to pay something, we, we, we had to pay our own fees? We have not had a prevailing party uh, attorney's fees in our contracts for a long time, and I'll let Jeff address that. Okay. In um, what happens sometimes in construction, and this is pretty much universal statewide with uh, public agency attorneys, is we don't put in our contracts a, an attorney's fees provision because what we found over the years is a contractor may have a may come in with a claim like they did at SSC for ten, fifteen million dollars, and it may end up that they they win forty thousand dollars by the time you get done but they could be uh, interpreted as the prevailing party. So all those attorney yeah. fees then would fall upon the public right. agency. So we yes, found sir. that, frankly, it works better when the contractors in, that, in those cases have to pay their own fees because they find out how ex, ex, you know, extremely expensive things are and they start to become more reasonable, frankly, in, in settling cases because they realize it's not cheap to go to, to trial and, and to do that. So in the eyes of the law and the court, even though it was reduced from 13 or 11 to 1, they prevailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Because they got something. Because they got something. Mm -hmm. I do have another question. Certainly. Please uh, the, relative to Lake San Marcos, um, I don't know. I, I do recall that by virtue of the insurance companies getting their lawyers involved. Yeah. Are, are they taking over the balance, or how are we yeah, involved I, I, in that? I think that there's couple of aspects there's the litigation aspect and then there is the the regulatory aspect which has to do with the 
uh, regional board, and there are also some water rights issues that are involved that are separate and distinct from what the CDC litigation involves. Uh, and it's very complicated. I think uh, Dennis is going to have uh, Mr. Myers and uh, uh, Mr. Dotson come before you in the next uh, meeting or so to talk about that a little bit and explain, bring you up to speed on where it's going. And certainly the coordination of our office in, in the regulatory issues. I mean, I'm happy to report that, you know, in the last six months, if you average our fees uh, just on the CDC uh, and um, Lake San Marcos stuff, they've significantly re been reduced and they're down about 35, 40 percent. Our fees in the last six months overall are down uh, about almost 20 percent. So what happens is, is that, you know, with respect to what we do, sometimes we're reactive and it depends upon what is needed depending upon what the level of the fees are. But we, you know, we're sensitive about that and we have tried to, we're trying to trend down the best we can in, in some of these areas. Okay. Other questions? Sure, yes. And thank you, staff, for putting this together. Um, these hourly rates is—is is it just simply the hourly rate, or there is there a retainer with your organization, or, or any of the others? Do we know? Typically, what um, the special now the special district attorneys are different in some respects than city attorneys. City attorneys have some. I've even seen car allowances and all kinds of different uh, types of uh, relations that they come up with. But for special districts, basically the uh, uh, attorneys that work in this area charge on an hourly rate. Some firms will charge, uh, you know, for, for copying and for, you know, long distance. And they'll, in, in my opinion, is sort of nickel and diming the client. And, uh, but nevertheless, that's some of the larger firms do that. But it is basically an hourly rate. We, so, we don't actually have a, a contract. It's worked historically as billing. Uh, and right. they, they'll sometimes have a letter, an engagement letter, something like that will basically explain terms and conditions. But with respect to the financial parts of it, the common practice for special districts is, is simply an hourly rate. So, that, so just to clarify, your firm doesn't charge us currently, and I'm new, keep that in mind. Of course. You, your firm doesn't currently charge us a retainer, and from what I understand, you That's don't right. charge us additional expenses like mileage and that kind of stuff? Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Questions? Um, I have a few. <clears throat> and I, I, I really want to couch this very carefully. I don't want to sound accusatory, but most people know my displeasure with attorneys being <laughs> sued a couple of times in my life for ridiculous reasons. And the attorneys mm -hmm. make ridiculous amounts of money. I have to deal with them all the time, so I understand. <laughs> okay. So I come somewhat tainted, but it's, this is not accusatory to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I know nothing about, the, the, let's go with your general expense. Um, your general expense, as it relates to us by how much per hour, um, I've dealt with other attorneys, and they have different hourly rates, one for the primary attorney, one for the secretarial service, one for the person that drives papers here and there, where you're just charging a flat rate of one fee for everybody. Yes. We, from what I can tell. Yes. And there's we, no real differential well, we don't, in what we, the service is. Yeah, we don't charge for, you know, what we would call uh, legal, uh, you know, either the secretaries yeah. or, or uh, you know, temps or whatever. We don't charge any, any fees for that. Basically, the, the gentleman in my firm, we collectively have almost 90 years of, of uh, legal experience so they're all very well um, you know mr. Dodson uh, in regulatory matters and sequel matters and mr. Uh, Jackson in in uh, litigation matters they're all well seasoned attorneys so we charge one rate we don't have you know if for example though if we came in I could see a situation where if we had a young attorney that was inexperienced we might then you know come with a different rate with respect to that attorney but at this point we're we charge the same because of our experience. Okay. That's to, as a general thing. Mm -hmm. uh, SSC wasn't around at the time, don't know anything about it, but we still paid you $3,200 this year for it. Yeah. That's, Is it over? No, that's what I just indicated. This uh, We've had uh, Mr. Gumpel go four depositions in the last few months, <laughs> uh, and that's just him. I was actually requested to come in twice, but they had spent money to get me out of the depositions. Um, so because we have staff going as an ongoing basis, 
we don't send a staff, we have an obligation and a duty as an agency to defend and protect them in, a, in litigation. Yeah. So whenever they go, we do send counsel with them. That's why we still have ongoing costs. And, and we'll, there'll be some preparatory work and things like that, but we want to make sure that they don't go in there cold, if you will. They need to, you know. Okay, moving down to Lake and CBC litigation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money being spent there. Uh, it continues, it continues. And the last time that I met the attorney from the JPIA, mm -hmm. uh, who, who kind of explained to us, and I thought he was, I liked him. <laughs> he kind of explained, we have one lake and we have 20 attorneys with a straw. And they're gonna suck that lake dry. I, I, I don't understand how much, when we're de minimis, is that the right word? Yes, you're right, yeah. We're de minimis, we're, we're hands free, we didn't do it. We spent a lot of money on defense. Yes. Yeah. Including this year, where I understood the JPI uh, attorney to say, it's on us now. So I, 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 no, I, 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 no, I, I'd rather have the attorney explain it if that's okay with you. Well, there's two parts, some that uh, he's involved in, some that the ACWA. That's why I said I, I can make the distinction maybe a little bit better okay, than sure, Jeff. Sure. Okay, again, ACWA, um, Ms. McKenzie made a reference to SDRMA, that's the wastewater side, and we have ACWA JPI. Aqua JPI has a duty to defend us because of virtue of they are our insurance provider through the joint powers. So once um, the suit was filed, there, keep in mind there's three suits that have been filed. One was initially, two of them were initially through the Regional Water Quality Control Board with respect to Lake San Marcos and San Marcos Creek cleanup and abatement. Those were issues directly associated with the Regional Board. Then CDC, in response to those issues taken on, they brought in outside counsel, Caulfield, they filed the Superfund case, cleanup and abatement of Lake San Marcos. That, brought, that, that triggered a whole different animal. That's when we triggered uh, insurance coverage from JPIA because of that lawsuit. JPIA came in, we approved them to be act on our behalf for that lawsuit. You still have water rights issues, you still have the regional board on us about anything associated with operation of our system or anything else. So you've got three different issues taken on. All Aqua JPIA did is take that issue. They just took the Superfund case litigation. So all they're doing right now is they have a duty and an obligation through their uh, former insurance to defend us. They have no obligation to pay. They have no obligation to do anything at all once they get to that point. So it's not a slam dunk that there's insurance money to pay for it. But, but I, will, I will tell you, we're bringing Mr. Myers up to speed. It's an area that he never yeah. had been involved in. And Mr. Dotson has brought him up to speed and we're pushing more and more of the legwork and the work that in these other areas that we would prefer to see that is paid for through JPIA. We are working very hard to see that that's, that's transferred over there. That's why you're seeing significant drop in the, in, in the overall uh, fees for that. Okay, and we're continuing to work on that, Hal, and we will continue to work on it because the more we can we can get them to do, the less we have to do. You know, but there is a kind of an overall role that we, because of the regional board, and these are very serious things. You know, they started talking today about <coughs> dredging the lake and and the potential of the of the uh, genie getting out of the bottle there could be you know pretty pretty consequential. But we'll have. Uh, Mr. Meyer, Myers come hopefully in the, next, in the next few weeks and uh, you can get into this even into more specifics, okay? Okay, I just... Uh, Fair question. I'm learning more from water as well. Yes. And learning that, not you, but there are attorneys that that's all they do is water and they send their grandkids to Harvard and Yale because they continue on for years and they'd rather be settled. And we could really settle this lake thing. It can't be that hard. Next board meeting, I after I got the phone call uh, that Jeff's referring to from special counsel this after, right before lunch, um, all I say is let's just say the game changed today on the whole process. So I asked Mr. Myers to come on the first board meeting next month to give you an update on what happened today. Positive, negative. What can you tell? It was a game changer, and they very seldom go to the positive. <laughs> yeah, I, I will tell you it's a significant change was pursued today okay so you'll get an update on the second and, and you know there's a question by the attorneys yeah no, no. We're, we're fed no. by the attorneys by the property owner yeah and and, and i'll i'm a very simple man 
like you, Hal. And if I can resolve something without litigating it or bringing in a bunch of attorneys, I've learned over the many years that that's what you want to do because it's it's really better for everybody in the long run. So that's why I drive an old Mercedes instead of a brand new one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next one down, urban villages. I won't even talk about that. Uh, <laughs> master plan environmental. Okay, now. The master plan, just explain to me a little more about that process, because we're about to start that process again. And in 2011, wasn't it 20, when was it, when was that presented to the board? In 2011. In 2011. What, what you have on, on the master plan, there's three steps. You've got the master plan document itself, which you'll be hearing at the next board meeting, which is the physical document that identifies water, where we need it, how much we're gonna use, how big the pipes have to be, all that kind of cool stuff. That's really great, except we can't go build a thing without an environmental document. So what the board has approved is called the Program EIR, program, prog Programmatic Environmental Impact Report. And what it does is it takes all the projects at a master plan level, instead of deferring the way we used to do it, is we just do a master plan, and we say, okay, we're gonna build a pipe from here to there we'll figure it out in 10 years. Now what we do is on a programmatic level, the environmental document is taken to the point of actually identifying mitigation steps in the document. So if we know we're gonna build a tank, we're gonna expand a treatment plant, we're gonna put a pipe in, we go through an environmental review of the document, identifying all of the mitigation, all of the impacts associated with it. We work that through all of the regulatory bodies, regional board, you name it, everybody gets a shot at it. Because it is a legal document, it is reviewed in its entirety and partially written by legal counsel. And, you know, sometimes we do everything according to the book, and we do everything you're supposed to do, and we still get sued. Okay? That happened in, was it, I think it was 2007, 2008. 2008. Did everything proper, had it approved by the board. We kind of got caught up into an issue of was more of a, a uh, uh, there was a some concerned citizen group that was trying to stop growth. And they didn't like the, the idea of us planning under, under our uh, obligations to provide service to the community to plan into areas that hadn't developed yet. So we got into a big lawsuit over, over that issue. I'm happy to say they didn't lay a glove on us, okay? We were completely successful we beat it down the judge agreed with what we said one of the things that I'm very proud of over the last 30 plus years is nobody's laid a glove on any of the directors any of the general managers or the staff we have we have been able to to uh, you know be successful in any in regards to that period you will see some of those expenses come back in 2000 15. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we'll be going we're trying not, I mean, understand the CEQA stuff is very complicated, but we've done this before, you know, we kind of got this thing down, I, I think we got, I don't want to say we've got the staff trained, but we've got everybody understanding how to, how to get this thing done in an efficient way, so that when it comes to you that it, uh, uh, we, you know, we can minimize what, what we need to do, but it is an expensive process. Last of my question to the closed session. Anyone else have questions? Yep. 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 Just, uh, Jeff, how long have you been working for the board? About 34 years. I mean, I as, as my own firm has been 20 years. Before that, I worked about 13 years for uh, uh, Vern Peltzer and, and uh, at uh, that firm as an associate and, and you know, came to the meetings. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, You've done a great job, and I think it's uh, it's very difficult to actually rate your job in a sense. Uh, you can't really do it by the amount of money we spend, but it's up to us to ask you why and, and so on. I know of my experience in, in dealing with you in my short tenure here uh, has been, uh, uh, you know, you've always kept us informed. The lake has multiple issues uh, having to, and I think when we started, we said this will go on past our lifetime. And, uh, uh, and, and a lot of those issues, and in other issues, when we did the MOU, when we've done, uh, you know, up here at the Metal Arc and, and so on, I think you've always come to us with uh, yourself or a consultant, and we have determined your direction. Uh, so at those points where you say, well, it's better to settle, 
um, or it's, it, it isn't. Um, and I think we've made those decisions uh, together. So I think you've done a good job on keeping us informed on the issues that we need to be informed on. I appreciate that. There's, there have been three gentlemen that sat in this seat since this, this district was formed. There was a judge, Don Martinson, basically formed the district. I think he even incorporated the city of San Marcos. He served for many years. After him, Vern Pelser sat here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Vern was uh, a, a very interesting, great lawyer, interesting character. And and I succeeded uh, those two guys. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a great place, it really is. It's in this place, I think, the, the district overall with this management runs pretty pretty smoothly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Note and file. Thank you. Reports, general manager. Um, I withhold anything for closed session, depending on which parts I'm in. Uh, District Legal Council. Report. Well, I was going to take it this opportunity to give you about a 20 minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, Song and dance. I don't have anything. Yeah, no, I don't have anything. Thank you. City of County Water Authority. Well, the most interesting thing is that tomorrow the uh, Fiscal Sustainability Task Force is coming together for hopefully a final review of what we're going to try to pass as regards the rates and whatnot happening at the next meeting. Thank you. I had seen a wastewater capital improvement committee. Yes, we had a meeting this morning, and the um, RTO, the regenerative thermal oxidizer, was. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> and you know I must. Tip of my tongue. Well, I must tell you, I the one thing I appreciate is they start out with what the whole darn thing is, and then they tell you what the initials are, so that for the new guys you go what the heck's an RTO. Um, it, it, and it's a big furnace that we pass uh, the uh, gases through to uh, for odor and diminishing, eliminating that. But it cakes up, and they're having a problem, and it's they're trying to figure out a way to solve the problem, either with new media or a bigger chamber, or because they have to send a guy in there every six weeks in a five by five by seven box to pick up these twelve by twelve inch boxes, take them out scrub them down, put them back in. It's pretty labor intense. So they're going to have a study for that to see if they can't expand that to six months, maybe even a year. And the other item um, was interesting that, um, and what's interesting to me being an architect and in the development industry, industry uh, the area that they built that whole thing on is on, the back end of it is on the Amubu Plain. And there's a little bit of settlement taking place. And when I say a little, I mean 0 0.3, 0 0.03 eighths of a foot. Maybe it's subsidence. Subsidence, settling, whatever. <laughs> That's, you know, a little bit of settlement. Oh. And they're studying it and making sure that it doesn't continue. And that's been uh, that subsides has been since they looked at the study, and that's uh, over a, a, a year's period. So, uh, not a big deal today, but they're keeping an eye on it. So, uh, that's uh, the report from the capital committee. Thank you. Policy? Well, I didn't attend that meeting because I went to one of our board meetings. So, um, but during the uh, the meeting, which was held uh, Tuesday, March 11th. They talked about uh, board of directors' mm -hmm. compensations. They talked about uh, proposed resolution for number 2014-02, adopting EWA's succession planning policy, which Jim alluded to <coughs> previously, trying to get a succession plan, or in other words, uh, be aware of who's retiring when and try to develop a plan on how to replace those people. They also talked about uh, tour videos that they're putting together for uh, the different age groups that will be touring the, uh, the plan. So that was it. That's it. Okay. Uh, director's reports on travel conference. I have one. Uh, along with two other directors. We were at the water reuse uh, annual conference, which is in Newport. Uh, very interesting, and, and uh, a couple of things that, that I got was strongly, no matter what, which which one I went into, is that uh, most people are very accepting uh, these days, becoming more accepting of indirect potable. 
uh, indirect protocol is, you know, whether you take it after you clean it and put it back in a well or put it back in the earth or put it back in a, a reservoir, it seems to be much more acceptable than even talking about direct. Although it's interesting they still like to push direct. And at those conferences, people agree, but if you come out and go to the man of the street, they're like, yeah, right. You'll be out of there in a heartbeat. Uh, like what happened to San Diego 15 years ago? Remember that was when that came up? TDT? TDT. So, uh, uh, very interesting. And then the other thing is the new legislation. We're actually, uh, they're going to take water away from the health department. Um, and it's going to the governor's new uh, department where they're going to be taking care of all the water. So that's going to make it a little bit easier to get indirect potable uh, into playing for a lot of people um, because of the, the new setup of what they're trying to do. And I, I guess from all the bills I saw out there, it looks like it could happen this year. In fact, one of them was happening yesterday. He, he uh, tried to do that last year through a bill and it got shot down. Yeah. So this year he's just going to do it through the budget process, not give him any money and move him under a different department and say, well, that's where you work now. Yeah, and, and then so. they have four or five or six different bills going through at the same time. So yeah. it's like they're going to pick one, you know. So uh, a very interesting indirect portable, I think, will be coming to a, a home near you soon. 2016, we're hoping to have regulations. Well, I always found that once you explain to people that you want a cousin of Colorado, <laughs> therefore it already is reused, and you explain how many times it's reused, that really? You know, I think that makes them stop drinking their water at the tent, but I don't know. But a great conference. Uh, enjoyed it. Thank you. Any other uh, reports? I did uh, also this? attended the conference, and the industrial use side of it has always intrigued me. Uh, and they really went into the opportunities. It, and I don't know, and then perhaps when we get to the study survey portion of our master plan, we'll find that out, if the opportunities exist here in San Marcos. Um, they talked about beverage, and, and by the way, Mark, uh, Mark Steen popped into my head, and that was eliminated completely yeah, when they brought up the, the discussion of the reason it failed in Orange County was Miller Brewing was not <laughs> going to allow mm. any kind of water except coming right out of the district because Coors was right by the stream going, and your water comes from reclaimed? Oh, really? <laughs> so that put the kai back. So I, the, the, my, as crazy as I am, I didn't think Mark Steen was going to be thinking about that. So, but they don't, uh, they don't bother me, right? I know, yeah, but the, the, <laughs> the, uh, our boys down the street uh, in Ocean and Escondido. Oh, Stone. Yeah. Uh, but it was again. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what industries we may have in our community that, on the industrial side, that might uh, benefit from this. But that was interesting. And just, I was there as well, and not to keep this uh, this one uh, seminar going and going. But that was a very funny story that was told regarding some two competitors in the, in the beer industry. Um, and it kind of, I kind of thought it made me wonder, you know, with Coors, how do they make those mountains blue? <laughs> you know, so um, as as a relatively new board member, some of this was technical, and, and although that they were extremely confident in the technology and and uh, their, how robust their systems are and how they're redundant and how they've taken mitigation, you know, steps for you know safety and, and different disasters. Um, it was, they, they still couldn't seem to me from a, from this is my first seminar I've attended they couldn't present it and articulate it in a way that it was gonna you know probably be marketable at this point to the general public so they're gonna have to really focus on that and uh, and kind of I hate to say not necessarily dumb it down but just they got to you know, really spend some money on a marketing campaign and, yeah. and, and be able to, to get it, a positive message out to the, the general folks that so they can understand it. So. it if, if I might, it's going to be a, quite a process and that's the big issue right there and, and it's funny you talk about beer. If you notice the uh, articles that came out on the daily San Diego Water Authority thing, one of them was an interview where a guy went on and talked to six breweries and their microbreweries. Because of where the water's coming from now, We've already started getting phone calls because we're getting more Colorado River aqueduct water than state water project water. It used to be a blend. Well, it's a totally different water, so now the breweries are having to catch up. Uh, so it's 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 in the least place you would ever expect it. Mm -hmm. We're already starting to get phone calls of what's going on. Yeah. Right. Then explain that, okay, it's now toilet tap and yeah, it's going straight to your beer too. <laughs> but on the other hand, we say have a beer in Vegas, we need the water. <laughs> We meaning engineers. <laughs> yeah. General public doesn't say that. 
engineers do. Weird sense of humor. And, and that, that, that might be a commentary, it might just in general, is that a lot of things we go to are generally put on by uh, very technical people. And they, they, it's really funny, the board members you see there are looking at them with a lot of puzzlement at times going, do you really believe that? Do you really believe? I mean, I think they did do one case study where they said that they had changed 10 out of 15 commissioners because of it, said they had been done with water. I mean, the very next election, boom, yeah. they were gone. So I mean, that's, you know, people, general public, they need the education. We're gonna get a great education on it, but it's up to us, and that's the importance of the outreach, for our outreach to touch what's important to the public, not what an engineer wants to tell the public, but how we can explain it to them in a way that they understand. Well, we got some good feedback from the board at that workshop, so we have a much better idea of how to add on that. And I hope so. the workshop, and thank you for uh, the staff to put it together, but it looked like it was cut and paste uh, workshops you've had before. It wasn't anything coming from board members. It was it was more engineering. And it was like, you know, people don't want to, they don't tell us what they want to know out there. In our opinion, sure. I'd say we're the ones that we talk to. It's, you know, we want to right. explain what a gallon of water is. So, you know. uh, other conferences? Okay. Uh, we're going to go over, 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 okay. over, 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 other conferences? Yeah, yes. conference report, yeah. Yes. Uh, I did uh, make the trip to D.C. and um, um, unfortunately I, I didn't get any money. How was Brock? Okay. <clears throat> he, he seemed to be fine, but he didn't meet with us. But it was very interesting. We met with Feinstein, McClintock, Garamendi, and Costa. Costa. Um, <laughs> Garamendi had, a, he said, just build more dams. Any questions? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, it is, they are aware, and I've heard this now about four times, we cannot let this crisis go to waste. So uh, they're picking up on it. There's a couple of bills that they're trying to put through, but uh, there's no dollars attached to them. So it's kind of an empty shell. But there, there are 11 competing bills for the November election now on the state water project. Yeah. So it, uh, but it was, uh, at least they know we're, we're out there, we're interested, we're doing what we can uh, on our side, and uh, I was quite happy to report, having made the tour in Northern California, where uh, during the tour I learned the priorities are fish, farmers, their population, the ocean, and then whatever's left us into us. And so now they've got their neck in the noose because they're, uh, they're uh, raising the Shasta Dam, the, the reservoirs that they should have been built weren't, so they're up again. It. So uh, that was my DC uh, uh, adventure. Uh, I guess. Yes. Sure. Oh. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was able to attend a, uh, a workshop here at Dallas City that was put on by Corey for uh, Fat Soils in Greece. Fog. So he invited, uh, he put it out to the community, tried to get the program introduced. Um, he did a real nice job. There was, wasn't a lot of people, I'd say there were probably maybe 10 organizations or so represented here. I think the university was here, the school district was here, Mama Cats, Mama mm -hmm. Cats was here, um, a couple other ones. But anyway, uh, he did a real nice job, a real nice professional um, presentation. Uh, he, and together, I guess, uh, with Lisa, maybe help with some other people, they put together a, a, a wonderful video. So uh, at some point, you'll have to see that because it was uh, very representative of uh, Sam Marcus and it was very telling on uh, what we're trying to do. And uh, he did a really good job of explaining, kind of introducing himself and saying uh, what the overall objective was of Valacetus. And uh, there was no mention of, uh, of fees at the time or permits or anything of that nature because uh, there isn't an intent at this time to charge fees or, or permits. Uh, trying to, uh, the main thing is to get it introduced to the community. Personally, was gonna go to each and every uh, food uh, processing facility, introduce himself uh, and, uh, and work with those individual organizations so that he can uh, tell them uh, what it is they're looking for, help them improve if they're not, if they need improvement, and uh, overall reduce the amount of uh, fat soils and grease in our sewer line. Yeah. What was uh, uh, interesting to see, was there any reaction from uh, the Rick Mama Cat's restaurant folks? No, no, I, I didn't know what he did. They, they just, uh, I think 
one of the questions I remember was, uh, you know, how does this align with uh, surrounding communities, with uh, Escondido, Vista, whoever it might be, because a couple of those organizations have uh, plants or facilities in uh, other, other, uh, I guess, cities. And uh, he did a good job of explaining how uh, what uh, our standards are a meld of uh, what we have surrounding us. So there's nothing that is contradictory from one to the other, and they're all similar, similarly based. So, uh, and he put out this, which is a nice little professional mm -hmm. thing, as a handout to them. Anybody like to look at this? They can, or I suppose we can get one if you need one. But anyway, he did a real nice job. So uh, thank you, Corey. Thanks, Lisa. And, and anybody else had something to do with that? Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm assuming that I missed the memo. I don't know if we notified the board or not. We notified you back when we actually imposed it that there would be a hearing. We probably just didn't follow up with an update on it. Last conference, sir? Yeah. Conference? Well, Water Council. Great. Water Council, uh, we had uh, another uh, update on the uh, Delta Conservation Plan. And, uh, it, it, you know, I, at, when I first heard that that was going to happen, I went, hey, here we go. There's probably nothing new. But hearing it yet again gives more input as to what's really going on, how big, how many different alternatives there are, what's the cost, uh, when, it, when it's going to happen. <laughs> That's a, a big joke in town. Um, but it, it uh, again, was uh, very informative uh, and uh, and probably, I think, uh, who was there sitting at our table? I can't remember her name. Fern Steiner. Fern. Oh. From the Water oh. Authority was there, so yes. yeah, so it was a, a very informative. Thank you. And if I may, sure. I at the last meeting I had agreed to go um, to the garden. I forget the term. The night in the garden that had to do with the water tour. Uh, what nature? Uh, water wise garden tour that's coming up this coming weekend, and I was unable to go because of some family issues. So I, um, if I can impose upon Lisa. Alicia went in my stead, and they had a very nice event, and Valacy just got some recognition, and would you mind just sharing it? I'm very sorry I missed it, but um, I was very proud of our district. Thank you. I didn't warn you. <laughs> um, Lisa Yaravi, Public Information and Conservation Supervisor. Um, yeah, we were honored this year to be chosen to be in the California Native Plant Society's garden tour. It's called Garden Native 2014. It's highlighting some of the best native California Native plant gardens in North County, San Diego. And our garden at Heritage Park is being featured this year on the tour. It's actually the 29th and 30th of March. So uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after that. Uh, last Saturday, they had an event honoring the people whose gardens were chosen. And we were invited to attend. And um, I, from what I hear, they, they mentioned Valacitos three times. And we got rounds of applause for uh, we donated a rain barrel to the silent auction to bring some attention to the rainwater harvesting and the rebates that are available right now for that. And I guess it was very well received. Uh, we're very supportive of the California Native Plant Society because their mission very much ties into what we do as far as water conservation. Uh, the California native plants, they use way less water than even the water-wise plants that we're used to. The succulents and things like that are very water-wise, but the plants that are native to this area, they just exist on the native rainfall. So um, that's about, about all I can say, yeah. <laughs> can, we, can we tell that to the city? <laughs> <laughs> I think the city pays for half the rain barrels. No, no, I'm not worried about the rain barrels. I'm worried about the landscape requirements. And Selection. I believe you called the meeting with them last time. I didn't hear you talk about it when they were sitting here. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm working. They're not listening to you. I'm working. Oh, no, did you don't. attend this, Lisa? Uh, no, I did not. So, did yeah. Who attended it as staff for? Uh, uh, Alicia was able to attend. Alicia. 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 Yes. Yeah, she would actually was actually had two updates to get today, but it just didn't work out scheduling. She was going to give you a little better update personally on that. Plus, she'll also be giving you an update on a conference she went to where she represented the district and the topic that we present, we being Valacitos, was the tours that the board has the Water, Water Academy. Uh, and from understanding of it, it was standing room only for everybody at the entire conference came to that one. So she'll be giving you a report on that at the next board meeting. Great, thank, thank you. you. 
Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And I am Anybody sorry else? I didn't go over it with them. I'm very proud of what you are doing. Good, thank you. Thank Alicia mm -hmm. for that. Um, I will. Thank you. Comment I have, uh, just a comment, and, and I didn't come up with a strategic planning committee meeting because I didn't see it then, but I've just seen it recently now, twice. Um, internal communications. Um, I don't know if the board was made aware of what uh, uh, Mr. Polo attended, Corey's uh, fog. fog, and I did get an email on a Lake San Marcos Garden Club, but it was the day before. I think I got the email on a Thursday, it was on a Friday, or I got the email on a Wednesday, it was a Thursday. Yeah, something like that. So it's like if we could kind of know about these things a little more in advance of a day, because I know we have to plan them out. Long now the board, the board did mention at the workshop that what we're what we're developing is an internal calendar that will have all of the events that we have scheduled. Uh, oh, I believe yeah. the request was in case one of you wanted. I think Director Sinella brought that up. If he just happened to have a free afternoon uh, and he wanted to show up, they would have a list of events that you could attend, coordinated through staff, so we know you're coming. Okay, was brought yeah, up. but that was brought up. Yeah, we're working on that, and I just, why it been I just reinforced that to Tom to yeah. take care of it. Thank it's you. Tom's fault. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that. It's always okay. number two's fault. Okay. Okay. And, and just to not to get involved in this, but, but you already are, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> it is a legal opinion? It's well, it's, it's a helpful opinion. Okay, it's a, it, there, I, some districts will have like a monthly calendar, and you know, sometimes there'll be something that'll come up in between, but it's been useful for board members to have a, you know, it's, it's emailed to you in PDF, so there's a monthly uh, calendar of events for the district, and so you can plan your month in advance a little bit. Sometimes that works, so merely a suggestion, you know, it's not a. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, anybody want to have as a future agenda item? And I know at this time. Okay, and uh, seeing I can do this without a vote, I understand. It is now time to close this session. We're going to go into the closed session. The closed session is held in this room here, and of course that means we have to ask the public to leave, but there's like a 10-minute break in between. So uh, with that being said, we close this meeting. Thank you.